Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm so excited that you're here. My name is Mabel. This is Mabel Journals. I am so nervous for this, but I'm super excited to get started because I have so many things I want to talk to y'all about and I'm just excited that you're finally here. If you're from TikTok or Instagram, thank you so much for coming over. Thank you to the 80-ish subscribers that subscribed before I even had a video. I just kept getting emotional when people just started following me and I'm like, uh, I have no videos yet. And that also motivated me to start this as well. So for those of you who have never heard of me, I am a bell my bell journals and I pretty much record myself logging in any books that I finished and I want to kind of just take you through a little tour of what my two bullet journals look like my two bullet reading journals look like the first one is for 2022 and this is the one that I started off with she is nice and thick and then this one is the one I'm using currently which is my 2023 reading journal I was so kindly uh, picked out by my subscribers on TikTok and so now I am super excited to kind of just tour you through both of them I'm gonna go over my 2022 first and sort of like explain what each spread means what I do with it why I use it go over go over over some of the spreads I created for each bullet book uh, whether I enjoyed the book or whether I didn't enjoy the book I still did a spread for it because I wanted to talk about it so <laughs> you're gonna see that and then um, there's some things some spreads that I had in this one that didn't make it to the 2023 and there's some spreads I added here that I don't think are gonna make it to the 2024 next year uh, either way I absolutely love this journey I'm so excited that you're here to come through with me I also plan on having a lot of book content as well so if you're into that you should also subscribe one final thing I also recorded myself creating this 2023 journal I had promised a lot of my subscribers that I was going to upload that and then I had some memory issues on my computer I don't know the text of it however I did not have enough memory to create a video or to kind of edit a video to put it on YouTube I finally was able to get my hands on a MacBook that could do that and Thank you to my fiance who purchased one for me and helped me kind of figure out how to do that. And so that is why this video is here. And so these two are my prized possessions. I'm going to be kind of just showing you through them. I'm feeling super vulnerable right now because there's some stars I gave certain things in here that I don't think I would continue. Maybe I'll do a video about that, like going back into my past reviews and changing it up. I do change it on Goodreads. I'm pretty good with updating my Goodreads, but obviously this is like physical and it's a little harder to kind of figure out how to change it, but I did want to let you know that in advance. Like I mentioned, I have footage of myself figuring this out and I have a journal setup video that I did create. However, there's so many pieces missing to it, unfortunately. My MacBook, again, like I mentioned, didn't have the memory to kind of figure it out. So I was kind of just deleting the ones I, di I didn't think I needed. And unfortunately, I did <laughs> need them. Uh, but Fear not, I have a plan. If you're interested in what my plan is to show you how I created these journals, you can stick till the end or you can move on over to that now. However, I did want to just, you know, you clicked on this video for what for, for this, so I'm gonna give you that. So uh, without further ado, we're gonna start with my 2022 reading journal tour. And again, if you have any questions or if there's anything that's confusing, write it down on the comments and we can go over it. Yay, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. This is my Archer and Olive 8x8 square notebook. I believe this specific one is from their 2021 spring collection. And the pages on this notebook are pretty thick, so you can pretty much use any type of marker you want or pen and it won't transfer over. This first page is my title page and I used this to figure out what I wanted my color palette to be and my font pattern as well. This is my future log, so similar to what you would use it on like a regular bullet journal, it keeps track of any anticipated releases I might have and any monthly challenges I want to keep track of. I ended up doing a Dutch door for this one because I thought it would unify the pages a little bit better.
here we have my index or kind of like a table of contents. This is probably my most used page. Anything that I write on my journal is written here along with the page number you can find it on. I don't usually use this for like a regular bullet journal, but on this it made sense for me. And then this middle yellow section is my wish list, my book wish list. And usually when I hear any books that I, I'm interested in or any influencers or, or book talkers talking about books, I write them there just to keep track of them. And then the second one is my genre tracker. I just keep track of any genres and I extended it a little bit with this extra flap just to make sure I had enough room for my fantasy. Uh, this is my bookshelfie, which is my favorite page. Anytime I finish a book, I just draw what the spine would look like on a shelf so that I can kind of look back at it here. And here we have my daily reading tracker. Every day I read, even if it's just a page, I try to highlight that page date. And the colors don't really mean anything either. I follow a pattern. So for example, the first row is January. So I use the colors from the next two months at the top, the color that those months are written in, which is yellow and purple. And I follow that pattern. So I do one yellow, three purple, one yellow, three purple. And I follow that pattern for the entirety of the year. And I like how it looks once it's finished. This is my 2020, my 22 books for 2022. And this was a combination of some new releases that I had, some older books I wanted to get to. And I ended up reading about half of the ones I chose. So this year I'm hoping I do a little bit better with my tracker. Then we have my top monthly. I basically just pick my favorite book every month. I didn't fill out December yet, uh, but yes, that's what I do there. And then the next one is my book series. And here I just fill in the amount of books that are for each series. I did it, this one a little bit different in my new one. And now we're starting for the first month, which is January. And I'll kind of show you a little bit how my monthly read, how I pick my monthly reads. So basically I pick five to six colors and I give each book a color assignment. And when I'm tracking the pages I read on the next page, I make sure to do it in the color that's corresponding to that book. So after I read five books, then I start back up again with the first color and I continue through the rest of those five colors. This means that the first book and the sixth book would be the same color but they're so far apart from each other that I know it's not the same book. So that's kind of how I, how I figure it out. And then the flap in the middle has my stats. Then we jump to my book pages. I have one page per book I read, and I include a summary page, and then some other basic information like the publication year, page count, the genre, my, track, my rating, any trackers like Goodreads, dates that I read the book, and a few other things as well. And the summary tends to be either a summary of what I read in the book or my thoughts or just a combination of the two. And I, as, you'll, as you can see, I started off not putting my book covers on there and then I little by little just changed it. And now I have like this whole collection of all the books that I have and I just print them out on sticker paper. I used to do it on cardstock, but I found that sticker paper was a little bit better. And then I organize it in that little compartment there just for easy access. But as I've gone on, I have basically evolved the way each page looks. I kind of get bored of the same patterns. So every month I change it up. This is February. Uh, this month I also decided I wanted to try February goals and see if that worked for me but honestly it was just too much to keep track of along with everything else so I only did it for February and here I added more washi tape washi tape that matched with the covers of the books and I included the rating in here but you'll see moving forward I, I don't really include it although now well, we'll get to that when we get to it. And then this is March. I ended up filling or creating a little bit more of these little sections here. And that's why now what I end up doing is I prefer to finish the book and then log it completely in here instead of adding it once I start a book. Because sometimes I start a book and I don't really finish it or 
I take my time or I don't know, it might go in between months. So I rather just log it in once it's done. So for example, House of Breath and Fire, you'll see in the next section of April, that's when I finished it. And so it kind of messed up like the pattern. So I have like all that orange at the top of April right there. And that's because I was reading House of Breath and Fire. And now I learned my lesson. That's why I end up adding the books after I finish them. And for April, I decided I wanted to do like a scrapbook type of feel. So that's what I did. And then for May, I decided I wanted the theme to match the washi tape I picked. And that's kind of like what I do moving forward. I like to match the washi tape with the color selections that I pick. Here we have Air of Fire and then Homebody. Then we have, I think that's Half-Blood Prince. Yes, it is. And Queen of Shadows, Kaiki. June, I read the least amount of books, but that just means I was probably outside more. This is her little, all her little secrets. Emperor of Storm, Empire of Storms. Bridgerton book. Fiona and Jane. Tower of Dawn. Under the Whispering Door. Grown. Beautiful Country. I loved Beautiful Country. The Midnight Library I thought was okay. Kingdom of Ash was a good one as well. And now, now we reach August. I love this August color scheme. I love that it's summery but also kind of fall, which is basically what autumn is. The Paradox Hotel I thought was okay. I Want to Be Where You Are was okay as well. Honey Girl was really good. I really enjoyed it. No Filter and Other Lies was, it was okay. Clap When You Land was really good. I really loved that book. I also love Elizabeth Acevedo anyway, so. Red, White, and Royal Blue was really good. I gave that a four star, I believe. With the Fire on High, that's another Elizabeth Acevedo book. Really good. Gallant, V.E. Schwab, another great author I love. Verity by Colleen Hoover. Uh, you'll see that I barely read any more of Colleen Hoover, unfortunately. Um, I don't know, her writing style just kind of got a little boring and repetitive for me. Um, and here we have September. I did pretty well in September. I read 13 books. Another thing I really love about the book covers is On Earth Were Briefly Gorgeous. I really wanted that cover, but I couldn't get my hands on it. And so I was able to put it on, on here and I was happy about that. Crying in H Mart. I really cried when I read that. That was so good. Starless Sea. I think I have to reread again. I did enjoy it, but I feel like I didn't get everything out of it like I wanted to. Migrations really surprised me. I didn't think I would like it as much as I did. Little Fires Everywhere was really good. Of course, it's a list. October, another good month. I liked this color scheme for October. The Last Quintista was science fiction and I was not expecting that. The Nature of Witches was really good. I think I might change my rating on that. Spy Family, so good. If you're looking for a manga to start, that's definitely the one to start with. I ended up buying a bunch of stickers and I bought these like text bubbles, which I really like because I felt like it went with the theme and that's where I put like all the book details. I just loved it. So good. Then I read The Atlas Six. I guess I wanted you to see that page again. Then I read The Atlas Six and I loved The Atlas Six, so I quickly went to the next one which was the atlas paradox and the complex is coming out soon so i'm so excited about that this is november the first half of november i clearly was not <laughs> into reading i had a lot going on oh there's another colleen hoover it starts with us i read it ends with us and it starts with us was not good Babel is amazing kindred is amazing the Picture of Dorian Gray is a great starter classic, I think, if you're trying to get into classics. 
this is my December, which I love the theme because I feel like usually I do like just red and green. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow was good. An astonishing color of after was good. Before the coffee gets cold is really good. Honey and spice is good. Delilah Green doesn't care is a good one as well. Flower crowns and fearsome things. It was pretty powerful, but not my favorite. Black Girls Must Die Exhausted. Absolutely loved that book. And we reached the end. I had a few extra pages, and I was going to do a, like a yearly wrap-up, but I didn't get to it. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll do it in the future. We'll see. But either way, I learned my lesson with this one. She is a lot thicker than she started because I ended up putting a bunch of different pages in there. Like I mentioned, my book cover started as cardstock, so it just added some dimension, but I wouldn't change a thing. I really enjoyed it, and it just makes me feel like this is my whole year in reading, and it's, it's nice to have something that all of your thoughts in one book and all of your favorite books in one, in one area. So that brings us to the next one. And this is my 2023 reading journal. This one's not complete yet because we haven't finished off the year. But um, I believe this is from like the recent collection. It was like a book collection, uh, the Archer and Olive 8x8. On the left hand side here, I ended up putting stickers that come with your mail when you buy like stickers or you buy like just anything book related. Sometimes they come with stickers, so I put it there. And then I put this quote, we lose ourselves in the books we read but we find ourselves there too then i wanted to do like a dark academia type collage for my title page and similar to the other book this is my table of contents my index i ended up doing one full page instead of cutting it in half you in the other ones i did like a half version but sometimes some titles are really long and so i wanted to give it a little bit more space just in case so i added a few more pages on there just to make sure i had room for that and here is my rating system. Um, so my five stars, my four stars, three, two, and one. It's just to keep to keep me accountable. And then this is my annotation guide. Depending on what I'm reading, most books are there. And then the other ones, you know, memoirs, thrillers, whatever it is, I have different annotation guides for it. And then we've reached my future log, very similar to my last one keeps track of my new releases and uh, any book challenges that I want to keep track of as well. And this is the daily reading. I pretty much follow the same pattern I followed before. I really love this tracker. I just think that at the end of the year you look at it and you realize how much you read and it's beautiful. This is 23 books for 2023. I have not read any of these and that worries me because these were books that I'm really, really excited about and I just kind of forgot about them. So hopefully next month or this month I, I can get started on that. Let me know if any of these are on your TBR. And then this is my genre tracker. I ended up making this two pages and I'm so happy I did that because honestly, it makes a big difference. I used these pip sticker um, genres on there because I thought it looked good with the theme. And then this is my new series tracker. So the first section says duologies, then trilogies, and then any series that are longer than that. So four books and more. And I really like this because I fill it in as I go instead of having the books already in there. Because you never know when you want to pick up a trilogy or when you want to pick up a duology. So it's nice to have that. And these are my top monthly. I haven't filled out for January or February yet, but I will get to it. And then on the right hand side, these are all of my book clubs. I follow Literally Dead Book Club by Books and Lala and Throne of Pages has a book club as well with her Patreon. So I just keep track of them there. The third row is empty because I thought I would have another book club, but I don't. Uh, maybe I will some part of the year, but I basically highlight when I finish that book. And this is my bookshelfie in all her glory. She is obviously not full yet, but she will be. And I just, I just love this page. It's so much fun to fill in. And if you're looking for a tutorial on this already, I have one on TikTok and on Instagram as well. 
and we reached the first month, which is January. I believe I read 14 books. Yeah, 14 books. And then this little section in the middle has my details and my stats. I printed them out from a template from Aubrey K Templates on Etsy. And here I read Our Missing Hearts. You Had Me at Hola. Here I ended up liking having the rating on there. So you'll see moving forward, I have a rating. And then The Serpent and the Wings of Night, The Cruel Prince. Oh, Soul of the Deep. I really like that one. The Queen of Nothing was really good as well. Someone Else's Shoes. The School for Good Mothers. And here I end up just finding washi tapes and post-its that kind of match the theme. And these particular post-its I got from the notepads that I have from Archer and Olive. Lessons in Chemistry was one of my favorite and here I'm pointing at my uh, stickers in the corner. I ended up adding stickers so that I, instead of writing down the page numbers, I just put the sticker. And this is February. I still haven't done the February stats. I did put a flap in there in the middle, but I have to still print out the details for that. And then I love how these pages turned out. Unfairly cute and Highly suspicious and unfairly cute. The golden air, the stolen air, whoops, stolen air, the Davenports, things we never got over. I love how I did these pages because it's kind of like collage esque. I put stickers, I put washi tape, notepad paper, everything. And then this is March. I ended up adding like this little key here that tells me like what the color is just because instead of having the markers like always out, like I was doing previously, this made a little bit more sense for me. And I read Adelaide and Deep as the Sky, Red as the Sea. And uh, another thing I really love about this journal is those two are like in a digital type format, like one was audio and one was an ebook. So having this journal really helps me keep track of everything I read, even if I, it's not in front of me. And that is the end of the book. Yay! I'm going to keep going, obviously, and I'll end up giving you another tour of this in the future once it's done. But thank you for sticking around. And if you have any questions on this journal or the other one, let me know. And yeah, this is what they look like side by side. They look so good on my shelf. And clearly one is a lot more thicker <laughs> than the other, but one's complete and one isn't. So they will change as time goes by. Okay, so that concludes the tour of both of these journals. I am super, super, super happy that I finally got this up and that y'all are finally watching it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give me a like and that way I can continue to post content like this. I also wanted to let you know, I know I referenced this in the beginning of the video, but I am gonna be doing a bullet journal setup for these journals. You'll see identical setups, identical spreads that were on this one, on this setup video as well. And my idea is to set one up and maybe do a giveaway of that journal. And depending on how many people are interested, I might do more than one, we will see. But if you're interested in that, go ahead and follow me on my socials because I'll most likely announce it on there and then ask like what kind of journals you're interested in because I do have a few of these, um, maybe not the same designs or the same colors, but I do have other colors and y'all can just vote on which one you like. And then we can also vote on the different kinds of spreads we can include if we want to add or eliminate any spreads that you saw in today's video we can do that as well so go ahead and give me a like and subscribe to this channel and all that fun stuff that y'all know how to do with socials that way we can stay connected and we can work on that um, I also plan on having some more bookish content on this channel as well like book unboxings and you know weekly wrap-ups weekly reading vlogs things like that uh, so I'm really excited to do something like that as well so 
if you stayed till the end of the video, thank you so much. It means so much to me that you stayed till the whole entire video. This is my very first video. So it means a lot to me that um, it was good enough for you to stay. And if you did, I'd like you to leave just a comment of uh, an emoji. Uh, let's see, maybe like a, a bullet journal emoji or like a journal emoji. I know they have like a few colors. So whichever color you like, just a journal uh, and yeah. That concludes this video. If you have any questions or anything, please leave a comment or just leave a comment to say hello. I'd really appreciate that as well. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one.